All right, so yesterday Mitch uh, built these two manifolds right here. So we've got an elbow SDR pipe, 10 inch pipe, and then these four inch inserts that go into the pipes. And so today we're gonna be installing them into the greenhouse and getting our two air manifolds ready. So we're gonna have an intake and uh, or inlet and outlet manifold. Um, so the inlet is gonna take all the hot air from the greenhouse run it through and equally distribute the air through the pipes um, that we're going to go through the greenhouse and then the outlet manifold is going to collect all that air and bring it back out into the greenhouse. We're going to be connecting weeping tile into this so it's perforated which allows the moisture in the air to condense. Uh, most of the energy in warm air is in the moisture and so that heat of condensation is where you get most of the energy dropping. The other benefit of having the perforated pipes is that the, uh, the moisture that comes out of the air can actually feed the roots of the plants. And then in the same way that we get energy coming out of the air through condensation, uh, in the summertime we can actually get cooling in the greenhouse through the process of evaporation. So when warm dry air goes through this system and it creates evaporation in the soil, it actually has a cooling effect to the air. So that's why they call these subterranean heating and cooling systems is because this actually does act as a dehumidification and rehumidification system to cool or heat the greenhouse depending on what's needed. It's a pretty interesting design. And as I've mentioned in previous videos and blogs uh, and even on my passive solar greenhouse design course, up until recently I couldn't tell my students or even my YouTube viewers whether or not these systems worked. But we've spent the last three months studying these systems in a program called Transys. And now we know, uh, based on that model anyways, uh, that they do actually seem to have an effect, a very positive effect actually. The model is indicating right now that our greenhouse will stay above zero until the middle of January. So we've documented the construction of all the manifolds. We're gonna document the construction inside the greenhouse as it all goes together. And we'll be sharing videos on how this uh, comes together on YouTube, as well as we'll be putting a new module together for our course. So any people who have already taken the course will get access to the new module. Um, if you are not part of the course, um, you can get access to the course. Hi, sweetie. You're really excited about these too, hey? Um, if you want to learn how to build one of these things, it turns out that the tool that I built for the course, the Passive Solar Greenhouse Design Tool, which runs on Microsoft Excel, both in the cloud or on your own computer, uh, is actually set up perfectly to design these systems. Um, I set it up not knowing if they worked or not, but I set it up using fan laws that uh, ensured that we had a good distribution of air, um, that we had the right number of air changes per hour, and so the program that I built actually works perfect for designing these things. And so you can get access to that tool and I'll leave a link to our DIY greenhouse design package in the link below. Um, or you can get the full meal deal and take the whole course from start to finish. Um, we will be adding some additional content in the future and the price might go up as a result of that because we spent a lot of time and money figuring this out. Um, but if you buy the course now, um, you'll get access to it sometime in the future when that new content goes up. And that will be ongoing because once we put this into the ground, we're actually gonna be instrumenting the whole thing. And we will tune the model that we built, the digital model, so that we know the digital model is predicting how it's gonna be. Then we're gonna observe it in an empirical way. Then we're gonna bring that empirical data back into the model to make the model better. And as more greenhouses go in, we'll continue to improve the characteristics of that model so that we will have a piece of software that we can use to help people to design their own subterranean heating and cooling systems custom to their soils, custom to the size of the greenhouse, custom to their latitude, um, all the criteria that are important in order to ensure that you have a really effective heat system inside of the greenhouse itself. Because of the way that we design these systems, the two sets of plans that we have for sale right now on the greenhouse as well, the greenhouse course, so the greenhouse product page, um, also have systems that will work very effectively. Um, and we're gonna be selling these plans for this greenhouse here in the not too distant future. We're calling it the Birchwood. So you can get access to that. And the other thing that is going to be available in the not too distant future is if you wanna buy this greenhouse, that's also gonna be available down the road as well. So if you want a greenhouse that's kind of tried and tested, 
uh, that works that you can come to our farm and see to see if you like it. Um, we're going to be having an open house in the not too distant future um, so you can come and check it out for yourself and see if it's going to be a fit for your, uh, your farm. This greenhouse is super important for food production in northern climates. Um, as, as you have seen in some of our other videos, we only have 100 frost-free days here. Uh, and that's fine for potatoes and carrots and kale and chard. And you can even make stuff grow that likes more heat if you find the right microclimates. But we literally cannot grow tomatoes here in this climate and have them red by the time the frost comes around. We have to pick them green and bring them inside and ripen them after the fact. But with a greenhouse like this, we'll be getting uh, red tomatoes kind of in the middle of the summer. And there's no reason that we can't do three seasons in this greenhouse. And this particular model of greenhouse is going to be 800 square feet when complete. Uh, and so I anticipate that we'll be able to grow the majority of the vegetables that my family requires, at least the heat loving ones, inside of this space. And uh, every, anything else that doesn't require the heat, like the root crops, like I was just mentioning, we'll do in our zone one garden. Um, which we're growing right in front of the greenhouse. Again, zoned very close to our center of energy so that we have very efficient uh, workflow um, to produce enormous amounts of food. Eventually out here, we're gonna integrate chickens and we're gonna int integrate ducks and those uh, livestock will also get access to the greenhouse as well because we want that animal impact in there seasonally. Um, and so we're gonna have a very integrated system within this, uh, this inner zone. Anyways, stay tuned to the YouTube channel. We'll be putting updates on how this uh, system goes in as well as uh, how it works in the coming months and years. Um, we're going to continue to improve them and continue to study it and continue to disseminate the information as well. One thing to keep an eye out for on our website, if you're not on our newsletter, you might want to sign up for that. Um, we're actually going to be putting a white paper together on how these systems work and everything that we learned from them. Um, that will be coming out sometime probably before Christmas. And that white paper will get updated on a semi-regular basis as we learn more from the empirical experiments that we're going to be doing on these systems when they get into the ground. Okay, guys, I hope you found that interesting. Stay tuned, and we'll see you guys in the next video.